everybody, welcome back to Disco Life. This week on Disco Life, Head Gasket Miracle? Disco Life. I do hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe so that we can reach our 100 subscriber goal and make a fails compilation video. It's going to be great. And um, so here we go. If you start doing any sort of deep searching on especially the 2000 or was it 1999 to 2004 Land Rover Discoveries is that they are notorious for having head gasket issues. So that was one of the things we made sure to ask the guy who was selling it to us, um, whether they had ever been done, how long ago, all that good stuff. And so he swore they had never changed the head gaskets on that truck at all. And at 216,000 plus miles, that seemed like a miracle to us. Okay. So, in advance, we got the test kit that I've seen online that people are using for the head gasket. Check and see if it's blown. So we can check that. Don't have any indications that they are, but just want to check it just to make sure. So Nate and I here, we're getting ready to do this test from Meisel. Uh, it's a combustion leak detector test. Hopefully what this is going to tell us is whether we have any um, exhaust in our coolant lines, which is going to tell us whether we have any problems. So we need to start the engine and let it idle for 10 minutes. Nate, can you go ahead and start the engine? Okay, go for it. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what it is. There's a little jet of water kind of on the inside there. I guess it's probably a return to the reservoir. Um, Nothing too crazy. Just went over and looked at the exhaust. Didn't know puffs of white smoke is one of the indicators. Didn't see anything there. We'll see. Um, I believe they were putting some more liquid into it and they were testing it with that and Nathan was revving the engine or something and I don't know but um, eventually they got it right um, dad will tell you about what they got wrong I don't know anything about what they got wrong really gotta run it for two minutes and see what we get <clears throat> So what you do is you hook it up to a vacuum line and then hold it over the coolant reservoir and uh, if it turns yellow then um, then the head gaskets are leaking and there's exhaust in the coolant system. It became very clear that I needed to have some way of drawing the like air from the from the cooling system up through the fluid in the test bottle. And so I wasn't sure if that's what I had to do or not. I saw one video that used that kit. They didn't do it. So we tried that at first. And as you can see, because there's nothing bubbling, 
it was a straight failure. So after we kind of failed the first time, we let the truck cool down and I kind of was playing around, looking around, because it said to use a vac line, and I don't have a vac of any kind that I could use. I don't have a hand vac is what they kind of recommend. But I realized that the truck had vacuum lines from secondary air injection. And so I started kind of playing around with that where I could easily unhook it. I was looking through the rave manual, just trying to make sure I was unhooking something that I shouldn't. And I found a nice vac line that was really close to where everything was you know, being tested that unhooked very easily, rehooked very easily, and drew back. Basically there's two adapters like this that come in this kit, this is the Lysol kit. So there's a cheaper one from Harbor Freight that seems like everyone uses. This one, what I didn't realize at the time, has a little hole right there. Now obviously if you're trying to do a vacuum, that's gonna be a problem. I didn't notice it before. Um, I came out, was kind of fiddling around with it and kind of noticed that and so I went and I switched the ends around here, plug this in, make a nice seal. And so I tested it and sure enough, it started bubbling through the coolant system because again, it was, it was creating a vacuum, right? And so it was pulling all of that whatever was in the cooling system up through, um, which is what we wanted. Because then if there was any exhaust in there, it would change colors, uh, very nice colorimetric assay. And you know, we could determine if the head gaskets were blown or not. Yeah, I mean, it took less than a minute. It's yellow. I'm thinking that's head gaskets. I don't know. And then I started thinking like, you know, the amount of fluid that was in it to begin with versus the amount of fluid at the end, it was like double, there was that much more. And it kind of dawned on me, I drew cooling system fluid up into the test vessel. Well, obviously that's gonna fail it, right? Because the test vessel or the, the cooling system fluid we had in it was green at the time. So it's green now. Um, it all made sense, right? That's why it failed. So it was a little less doom and gloom, but we didn't have any conclusive results. <laughs> so we ended up doing this the third time. Um, it had cooled down enough that by this point we did it again. Um, used the, the secondary air injection vacuum, but this time I was a lot more careful about plugging it in. So I just kind of was like touching it to it, just enough to kind of draw bubbles through, but not enough to pull everything, including the fluid and the cooling system through. And so that made a big difference. And I did it for like three minutes and didn't have anything. And then I kind of put the, the vacuum line on a little bit too much. And you can see in the video, like it, it definitely pulled up some fluid. It had more fluid in it and it was green, like straight green. And so that made me really feel really good because I, I like just witnessed it happen that time and knew kind of knew what was gonna, what, what was going on. And so, I felt better from the previous experiment that it didn't work, it wasn't valid. This one, I had three minutes of data to say, you probably don't have a blown head gasket. Um, but up to that point, we had done three minutes basically. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this one more time just to, to verify, but that, that looks good as far as this goes. So I'm getting ready to do trial four, and this one should be really the one that kind of tells me. I'm gonna get this so that I have a graph going, so my engine cooling temperature. So in trial four, you can see I'm really paying attention to the um, temperatures of the truck. One of the main reasons people hypothesize, because nobody's quite sure, but uh, one of the main reasons pe people think that so many head gaskets blow is because the gauges and, and kind of the cooling system itself 
um, to keep an eye on it just aren't the best. For whatever reason, the gauge doesn't even start to move until 240 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. And you're doing damage at that point. Um, and the cooling system can get that hot. So, we'll see. Uh, kind of interesting, half the cap looks like it's melted off. Almost. No idea what would have caused that. I've heard the cap can be the issue, cause the issue we've been dealing with. Um, so that's interesting. I've just found the records for this thing. None of the cooling system has been replaced at 200 and what now 17,000 miles basically. So I'm wondering if I just don't order everything and do that. So I already rubbed 84. And it's only four minutes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely not you know, keeping it as cold as I would prefer. Truck steady at 98. So we're gonna put this in here, like it's supposed to be. I'm gonna do this back line here, and I'm just gonna touch it ever so slightly. Super blue. That is what it came out of the pipe with or the, the box with. Um, trucks up to 99, so a little warm, not terrible. Feeling pretty good about these head gaskets right now. So the fourth test, final test, the test to prove all the tests right or wrong. Pretty conclusively, at least in my mind, showed that there was no exhaust in the cooling system. So to me, it just really kind of solidified that it's probably not a head gasket that was bad. So when we bought the truck, the guy said that he and his wife had, didn't keep the service records. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what he said. Um, but he did tell me that it got serviced sometimes in um, a town close to them that had a Land Rover dealer. And thankfully, there was only one Land Rover dealer in that town, so I was able to track them down. Um, and I was even able to persuade them after some uh, some time to actually give me all the service records that they had. Um, and so kind of during, during this process, I was able to kind of track that down and track down those records and at least track down the fact that they would give them to me. Still didn't know <clears throat> if the head gaskets had been done or not. The dealership sent me over those records I started pouring through them. So now I have this record of everything that's been done. And boom, right there. Head gasket set. They have done the head gaskets, about 167,000 miles. We got the service papers after we started with this. They had already been replaced. Eh, that's all right. Typically the head gaskets are good for at least 100,000. So we're good up to 267,000 miles if we're maintaining the vehicle well. That is a huge sigh of relief.
thank you for watching Disco Life, and uh, please like and subscribe since it's a YouTube channel and all YouTubers seem to say that. And also, we kind of have to. But um, anyway, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Disco Life. So if you think that's weird, you told me to.